in this lecture we're going to talk about the hydrolysis of esters now hydrolysis uh, the word hydro, hydro, hydrolysis uh, literally means it's the decomposition of esters by the by the addition of water lysis is used for decomposition when you break down a compound into two parts and hydro means water so it's the decomposition of esters by the addition of water we already know that carboxylic acids and alcohols they reacted to form ester in water molecule which was a condensation reaction and this reaction is the exact so this was the reaction that we were studying previously uh, the reaction that we were studying previously was this one where we had a carboxylic acid reacting with an alcohol and it would end up producing an ester in a water molecule now we're going to do uh, we're going to study the reverse reaction which is that an ester is going to react with a water molecule and it's going to produce a uh, produce a carboxylic acid and an alcohol back again so that's that's the exact reverse of the reaction that we were studying before so hydrolysis or the reverse reaction where an ester breaks down into a carboxylic acid and an alcohol the conditions for that particular reaction are you can either use dilute acid and reflux or you can use dilute alkali plus reflux um, there's only one thing that you additional thing that you need to know about uh, uh, these conditions what that is that if you use dilute alkali plus reflux since your products uh, product contains an acid so uh, the excess alkali or if there's leftover alkali will end up reacting will end up reacting with the carboxylic acid that is formed formed so that additional thing when you when you're um, using dilute acid plus reflux uh, the product would contain carboxylic acid plus alcohol but if you use dilute alkali plus reflux you're not going to get a carboxylic acid that carboxylic acid would end up eventually reacting with the alkali so i'm going to give you uh, uh, two examples uh, one of each uh, of what the products are going to be when you hydrolyze an ester so let's start with the uh, let's start with uh, the decomposition or hydrolysis of uh, methyl propanoate so so methyl propanoate there's going to be a c double bond o single bond O that's an ester and methyl means there's going to be one carbon atom on the single bond O side so that's the C this is CH3 and propanoate means there are going to be three carbon atoms on this side so that is methyl propanoate I'm going to try and break down this ester by using dilute acid plus reflux uh, what's going to happen is that this ester group would break in the middle and it's going to produce two uh, products water is going to be added and two products would be formed one would be this side which is double bond O this side has three carbon atoms it's the propanoate side so I'm going to uh, uh, draw the entire side the molecule is split into two and the other side has a single bond O and a CH3 group so so I've split the ester into two the ester group has been broken into two what's going to happen now is that one side on the carboxylic acid side this propanoate side there's going to be an OH added and on the other side there's going to be an H added so water uh, these two uh, H and OH molecules these this H and OH atoms they come from water molecules so that's the addition of water so the ester group breaks and it's exactly the reverse of how an ester was formed so you get propanoic acid and you get methanol and the conditions that were used in this particular reaction uh, this is with the this is with when you use a dilute acid and reflux so you're using dilute acid plus reflux in this particular case 
Now the second case is what's going to happen when a dilute alkylase is used. Now the reaction is going to be exactly the same except for the fact that excess alkyl is going to end up reacting with the carboxylic acid that is formed. So let's uh, take ethyl uh, ethyl uh, butanoate. So I'm going to write down ethyl butanoate. So they're going to be there's going to be this is the butanoate side and then you have ethyl and I'm going to draw all the hydrogen atoms so they're going to be they are going to be I'm completing the two hydrogens with this one and they're going to be two hydrogens on this carbon atom and three hydrogens on this carbon atom and I'm going to break this ester down I'm going to add water I'm going to add water to it and I'm going to break the sister down and it's uh, it's the sister group is going to split into two and the products that are going to be formed is one side would be the butanoate side and there would be four carbon atoms on that side and there's going to be a double bond O and these are all the hydrogen atoms So that's a butanoate side and the other side is going to be the ethyl side which is going to have two carbon atoms and a single bond O. So that's my ethyl side. And a water molecule is going to get added up. It's going to get added to this, uh, it's a decomposition it's hydrolysis so water molecule is going to be added. So OH is going to be added to the, to the butanoate side and H would be added to the uh, ethyl side so it forms an alcohol ethanol and butanoic acid so this is butanoic acid and this here is the alcohol which in this particular case let's write down the name of this uh, it's ethanol so this side is ethanol now only one difference, we're using uh, NaOH uh, uh, to, uh, to decompose this uh, particular ester. So we are using, the conditions used in this reaction are dilute alkali, which in, in my case, I'm using NaOH, that's an alkali, you can use KOH as well, plus reflux. So what's going to happen is, that this carboxylic acid that is formed is going to end up eventually reacting with the uh, it's going to end up eventually reacting with the alkali. So so the product that's going to be formed is not going to be the going to be butanoic acid. What the product is going to be, it's going to be it's going to be butan sodium butanoate. What's let's write down all the hydrogen atoms. So the product that's going to be is going to be sodium butanoate. It's going to be a salt. The NaOH is going to end up reacting with the butanoic acid. So you're not going to get butanoic acid. What you're going to get is sodium butanoate. Now this thing, you must uh, clearly uh, remember this, that whenever you use a dilute alkali, uh, you're not going to get a carboxylic acid. So instead, what you're going to get is going to be a salt of the carboxylic acid. So we can we can rewrite this entire reaction, and this entire reaction would be uh, that you had an ester. I'm going to write down the compressed notation now. So you had CH3, CH2, um, another CH2, then C, and then two oxygens, and then you had CH2 and CH3. So I'm going to incorporate NaOH into the equation. So we were breaking it down using NaOH. And the product is going to be, it's not going to be butanoic acid. It's going to be CH3, CH2, CH2 and uh, C minus one and Na plus one. That's sodium butanoate and the other one is going to be the ethanol. Not, eth nothing happens to the ethanol. It means ethanol. 
the alkali is not going to react with the with the alcohol so that remains as ethanol so that's CHC, CH2 and OH so this is the thing that you need to remember when you are hydrolyzing an ester if it's an alkali it's going to break down into carboxylic acid and an alcohol molecule but if uh, but the carboxylic acid is going to end up reacting with the alkali so the product would not contain the carboxylic acid it's going to produce it's going to produce a salt of the carboxylic acid but if if it's an acid you're using an acid to break down decompose an ester then the product would be a carboxylic acid and an alcohol Now esters are frequent uh, are very frequently used in food flavorings and uh, perfumes. Uh, they are volatile compounds. Uh, they are volatile compounds and uh, have very fruity smell. So they have a very characteristic characteristic fruity smell. So which makes them uh, uh, useful in the food industry. So they use as food flavorings and uh, artificial flavorings, your artificial fla flavorings in your fruit juices and your ice creams, etc. They they're mostly esters, uh, synthetic esters, and they're also used frequently in the in in, uh, in perfumes because of the uh, aromatic scented smell. So they frequently have, I've given you a few examples of uh, a few esters. For example, pears have uh, this characteristic smell of pears. Is because of the ester that I've uh, written down. This ester over here. Oranges have this particular ester, which, which gives them the characteristic smell. Apples have uh, uh, this ester over here, which is, uh, which I think is butyl ethanoate. So uh, they are frequently used. They're volatile compounds. They're used in food flavorings and and as perfumes, and uh, which makes them very very useful in the industry. The last thing that I'll describe uh, in uh, when we were talking about esters, I use frequently the term reflux when I was talking about the conditions of the reaction. Now, uh, this is the reflux apparatus. Reflux, uh, it literally means uh, to heat. But there's only one slight difference. There's no, uh, this, uh, uh, it literally means to heat, uh, but there's one slight difference and that difference is that a condenser is placed on top a condenser is placed on top which is going to prevent volatile substances from escaping so so which prevents volatile substances from escaping uh, what this means is for example if I want to make an ester what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this round bottom flask and I'm going to fill it with uh, I'm going to mix uh, a carboxylic acid with an alcohol so if I mix a carboxylic acid with an alcohol what's going to happen is that alcohols are very volatile substances so the the very bright chances that you may, when you start heating when you start when you when you apply heat so the very bright chances that alcohol vapors these green dots are alcohol vapors they would try and they would try and escape from this round bottom flask now to prevent that from happening uh, this condenser on top this cold water being uh, pumped into it and uh, cold water being drained out of it so so this condenser is going to bring down it's going to lower the temperature it's going to and all the uh, alcohol molecules they're going to condense back and they're going to fall back into the container so so you want these two to react together and the only way you can react them together is you have to keep the alcohol in the ground bottom flask so so the condenser is placed on top which would prevent any alcohol from escaping so all the alcohol has to react with the carboxylic acid so that's the purpose of the condenser which is placed on top it doesn't allow volatile substances to escape 
and the last thing is uh, whenever you're dealing with uh, organic compounds heating is not done directly you generally use uh, use an electric heater or some other device which has no flames because if you bring flames close to organic compounds they're going to combust and they're going to burn so to prevent any uh, accidents happening uh, heating is never done directly so this is what reflux is when we, when I was talking about in when you're forming esters when you're breaking them down as well so reflux uh, has to do uh, with preventing volatile substances from escaping so you put a condenser on top and you keep heating it from the bottom so it literally means to heat uh, except for these minor differences